Hello Internet, Jojo here, and today we are going to finish off calculating Zoro's greatest feats of power. Now, I say finish up, as last time we calculated all of Zoro's greatest pre time skip feats, and that was a good time. We got to calculate this explosion, scaled Zoro to this, and got to talk about whatever is going on here, the monkeys and all. That was a good video, so check it out if you haven't seen it yet. However, this time, we are talking about post time skip Zoro. So, let's stop wasting time and get this started, and where better to start but Fishman Island. Unfortunately, Zoro has no significantly powerful feats of power in this arc, other than blasting a hole through a sea fish. Instead, let's jump into one of the best movies, Film Z. After the Straw Hats pull the former Admiral Z from the ocean, he wakes up and they have a little conversation. When Z discovers that he's on a pirate ship, he immediately attacks him because he considers all pirates evil due to, you know, tragic backstory stuff. Now, there are two feats that come from this first brief battle. The first is from trading attacks back and forth. We will talk about this one in a minute. And the second is when Zoro, Sanji, and Luffy tanked a full power Smash Buster explosion to the face without showing any damage from it. Now, without context, this explosion is not that impressive, but as we know, context is always important, and in context, this explosion is incredibly powerful. Z's Smash Buster explosion is powerful enough to blast Kizaru to pieces and destroy the Thousand Sunny's entire kitchen, and the walls of that are made of atom wood, wood that is known to take bombs without issue. However, the most impressive thing the Smash Buster has done is when it blasted a Dynastone faster than Kizaru could move while he was using his Yada Mirror. In real time, it takes 4.24 seconds for Kizaru to move the distance he wants to go, but it takes a Smash Buster 2.53 seconds to blast a Dynastone the same distance. This means that the Dynastone must be launched at about 1.675 times faster than light. Assuming a granite-like density, and this stone should weigh about 74 kilograms, basically the weight of an entire person. For the Smash Buster to launch this stone at 1.675 times the speed of light, it must have had an energy of 2,234 megatons of TNT, hundreds of times stronger than a nuke, and is more than enough to sink an island. It's also worth mentioning that this explosion that launched the stone appears to be a much less powerful explosion, as the fireball is significantly smaller than when he exploded Kizaru or when it exploded the Sunny. So Zoro tanked this incredible amount of power and didn't receive any visible damage. Though in all fairness, those are some high quality clothes. However, the Smash Buster pales in comparison to the power that Z has with a single punch. In this video, we calculated that for Z to do this, he must have been moving at about 17.125 times the speed of light. And we also calculated that his sea stone arm has a volume of about 0.889 cubic meters. While sea stone is, by definition, a stone, it appears to act more like a metal, as it can be forged into various objects and even bent with kicks. So assuming a steel density of 8,000 kilograms per cubic meter, and this arm would have a weight of over 7,000 kilograms, or about 7 tons. So for Z to throw 1,700 kilograms at 17 times the speed of light, he would end up striking with about 22.54 teratons of TNT. Now, while Zoro never really had a major competition with Z outside the brief battle at the start, Zoro was able to one-shot Z's right-hand girl, Ayn, and because Ayn was trained directly by Z, it would make sense that she should be able to take a hit or two from him, meaning that Zoro should be able to match this level of power as well. This is even more plausible when you consider all the time that Zoro's fought admirals like Kizaru and Fujitora. In fact, across all canon and non-canon material, Zoro has fought Fujitora at least four times, and all of them ended in a stalemate. Now, hold up a minute. I mentioned this before in the video on pre time skip Zoro, but I wanted to mention it real quick here. Unlike Luffy, Zoro is not a power or speed based fighter, and unlike Sanji, he's not a technical fighter. 
Zoro is a skill slash precision based fighter. While Zoro is certainly incredibly physically strong, we rarely see his strength because his power lies in being able to cut anything. Basically, this means that many of his greatest feats will be cutting characters who are known for their durability or characters that have survived powerful attacks. Characters like Pika, Kaido, Mr. One, the Punk Hazard Dragon, Dice, and Kuma are all great examples. So because of that, we will just have to try and do what we can. So a lot of skill into his own durability in calculating feats that other characters have done. Cool, cool. Let's move on and calculate Zoro when he cut this gigantic cannonball, stopping it dead in his tracks. While the episode of Luffy is about Luffy, hence the name, in this movie, Zoro just kinda does his own thing. In fact, he spends most of the movie lost and winds up in the right place at the right time to save people from getting blown up by a gigantic cannonball. Of the three times he cuts gigantic cannonball, we are going to look at this last one. This last cannonball is explicitly described as having a high angle trajectory, meaning that it was intended to have reached its terminal velocity before it hits its target, and that makes it, by far, the most dangerous of these three cannonballs. So to start, we can look at when the same cannonball fired a thousand sunny. <laughs> Comparing the sunny to the ball, and it comes out to be about 230 meters in diameter. That is a cannonball roughly two football fields wide. Taking the diameter and using the typical density of iron, which is the normally used material for a cannonball, this must weigh 50 billion kilograms or about 138 times the weight of an aircraft carrier. By taking this mass and its cross-sectional area, we find a terminal velocity of 12,568 meters per second or Mach 36. This cannonball moving at this speed would strike the earth with 952.5 megatons of TNT. And this is what Zoro must have had to counter when he struck it. This is not particularly impressive considering other feats we talked about, but I just like this feat and really wanted to talk about it. This next feat is a recalculation of one that we calculated a long time ago, as Obi-Wan would say, during the dark times. In Stampede, Fujitora summons this meteor and Zoro slices it in half, stopping its movement and stopping its energy completely. Previously, we compared this meter to the ship, and assumed that this ship was about 45 meters long, based on similar ships at the time. However, taking another look at this ship, and we find that it actually appears to be a ship of the line. These ships are typically about 60 meters long, Using that in this screenshot, and this meteor comes out to be about 639 meters wide, about 6 football fields wide, and has a volume of 136 million cubic meters. Typically, meteors have a density of about 3,700 kilograms per cubic meter, and that would bring this up to a mass of 506.9 billion kilograms. This means this meteor is 1,500 times the weight of the Empire State Building, and he stops it completely. Assuming that Fujitora is pulling this at a high speed of 160,000 miles per hour, as I'm not sure why Fujitora would be pulling it at a slower speed, and this meteor would be charged with about 309.9 gigatons of TNT. Due to the fact that Zoro can completely stop this meteor and cut the meteor in half, he must be capable of generating this level of power as well. Of course, if this meteor is only moving at an average meter speed of 11,000 meters per second, it would have a power of 7.32 gigatons of TNT. However, when it comes to meters who are pulled by a character for the purpose of attacking a specific person, I think it's fair to assume that unless there are some other factors, the meteor is moving at top speed. Guys, this next one's a good one. Ladies and gentlemen, fasten your seatbelts. This next feat is actually a combination of three feats and three events. During the start of the Wano arc, Zoro, in heavy quotations, killed Hawkins. Later on, Zoro then also one-shot Kamazo, also known as Killer, and finally, Zoro recently one-shot Apu. Now, the thing is, all three of these characters and Zoro belong to a special group known as the Supernovas. Right before the time skip, many of these supernovas, Hawkins and Apu for certain, took a major hit from the Marine Admiral Kizaru and survived. However, this was not just any hit. This was a hit explicitly stated to be 
light speed. Now we have talked in length about punches and other attacks that move at faster than light speeds, but there is a distinct difference between an attack that happens to be moving at light speed and a light speed attack. There's always been a distinct difference between these two. To put it simply, in order to calculate the power of an attack that happens to be moving at light speed, you would use the regular kinetic energy formula. However, for a very much explicitly stated light speed hit like Kizaru's kick, you would need to use the relativistic kinetic energy formula. This formula accounts the real life fact that as an object enters the high percentages of light speed, its mass increases dramatically, generating catastrophic levels of power. Other than some slight changes, it's pretty much the same thing as the kinetic energy formula, meaning that all you need is the object's mass and speed. But here's the kicker. When you use the relativistic kinetic energy formula, the speed you use cannot be faster than light, as this formula is bound by the law of real life. That said, Kizaru stands at 302 centimeters tall, just under 10 feet, and is 56 years old before the time skip. A man of this age and height would have an ideal weight of 198 kilograms. As Kizaru appears to be throwing his entire body weight at near light speeds, we can use his entire weight in this formula. Reducing light speed by 1 meter per second, as in this case, mass cannot move at true light speed, and we get a relativistic kinetic energy of 56.16 teratons of TNT. This level of power is almost as high as Kizaru himself, and given the context, also makes sense as it allows him to generate obscene levels of power with very little effort. If any other character wanted to generate this much power by normal kinetic energy, they would need to move at dozens of times faster than light, but Kizaru can do this without pushing himself at all. Even while this attack is much slower than many of his enemies, using the intangibility and speed of his Yadamir, he can take out most opponents without much effort, and when he comes up against an opponent who he needs to get serious against, he can pull out his lightsaber like he did against both Rayleigh and Zoro. We also know that Zoro can do this because not only has he wrecked multiple supernovas who either survived the hit or skilled those who have survived Kizaru's hit, but Zoro has also taken on Kizaru himself in single combat, then in a 2 on 1 fight with Zoro being the one. Another feat that all of the supernovas survived and that Zoro would have to vastly outperform it in order to hurt them like this is the explosion from Stampede. Previously, in this video, we calculated that because the explosion overpowered the water pressure of the knockup stream, it must be worth about 258 petatons of TNT. This next calculation is actually Zoro's most recent major feat, when he cut the horn of the Onigashima skull. I almost didn't include this feat, because this is one that does not reach the absurd levels of power that the other feats have, but I feel like it would be disappointing if I didn't include it. During the fight on top of Onigashima, Zoro unleashes an attack that was powerful enough to make Big Mom worried for Kaido. Now, this attack did not land on Kaido, but instead raced past him, slicing one of the horns of the skull and throwing it into the sky. From a previous video, we calculated that the eye of the skull is just over 316 meters tall. Using that known length, we can measure the horn and find that it's about 418 million cubic meters of bone. Bone has a density of 1850 kilograms per cubic meter, making this horn a whopping 774 billion kilograms or 1549 times the weight of the Burj Khalifa, the largest building in the world. So now that we know the horn's weight, let's find the speed that Zoro sent it moving at. There are two methods of finding this. The first is to use the speed of the projectile, and the second would be our typical method of measurement, treating this empty panel as a single spoken word, or 0.375 of a second. This attack is the same one that Zoro used against Ryuma, and at the time, he was moving fast enough to set him on fire. This, along with confirmation from various games, shows that this attack must be moving at speeds greater than 11,000 meters per second. However, if we use a distance it moved in one panel, 4.62 kilometers, and a time of 0.375, we get a speed of 12,300 meters per second. This higher speed is what we're going to go with, as this is about 600 chapters since he fought Ryuma, and he has definitely gotten much faster, but we'll go with this. Now, the horn did not start moving until after it got cut, meaning that we can get our time frame by using this speed and this right here distance. 
at this speed, this attack would cover this distance of 1,763 meters in 0.143 seconds. Considering the horn was thrown 1,552 meters upward in this time, we find that it must have been moving at about 10,845 meters per second or 31 times the speed of sound. This much mass moving at this speed and the energy to cut the horn from such a distance in the first place, we get a final energy output of 21.81 gigatons of TNT. This is quite a bit greater than your typical meteor, much greater than this cannonball, and it's about 3.7 times the power of the combined nuclear arsenal of Russia and the US. With that, we've come to our last feat. This last feat is one that we'll be giving to Zoro through scaling to use his kid. There should be a captain in there somewhere. Yusuf's captain, kid, and killer. During the first fight against Bullet and Stampede, Yusuf's kid managed to land this gigantic punch on Bullet. Comparing Bullet to Usopp and then to the knuckles of the fist, and this fist is about 50 meters wide. Assuming that this gigantic metal arm is just a larger version of his normal metal arms, and using his 3D model from Power Warriors 4, we find this big fist has a volume of 108,432 cubic meters of steel. Steel has a density of about 8,050 kilograms per cubic meter, meaning this giant fist would weigh around 872,883,320 kilograms. This is about 2.6 times the weight of the Empire State Building. Now that we've found the fist's weight, we all know what's happening next. We need to find Eustace Kid's punching speed. Because this is a movie, we cannot take any feats from the story's main canon and apply them here, as feats from the movies should stand alone. So while we know that both Luffy and Zoro can move at speeds far greater than light, we cannot apply that speed here. Instead, we'll have to find his fastest speed from the movie and use that for our speed portion of the kinetic energy. Guys, there's not a single major relevant speed feat in this movie. Until the last two minutes, maybe. In those last two minutes, Zoro, Sanji, and Luffy show that they can all react to Kizaru's lasers. <laughs> this calculation uses the same process that we used for Zoro dodging Kuma's paws in the previous video and when Luffy dodged Kuma's lasers. From the moment Kizaru fires these lasers to the moment that Luffy completes his reaction is about 3.29 seconds. Of this total time, Luffy is capable of reacting in about 0.56 of those seconds. This means that base Luffy was capable of moving and reacting at about 5.875 times the speed of light. This is definitely a low calculation as I made sure to pad out the runtime, intentionally making Luffy a bit slower. And the speed of this feat is more likely comparable to Luffy's Gear 2nd, but we'll go with this. Assuming that Kid's fist of 872 million kilograms is matching Luffy's base speed, we find that this hit would be landing with about 323 petatons of TNT. Gear second notwithstanding, this is still a low estimate as Kid's hockey should make this attack much stronger. We can definitely scale this to Zoro as he and Kid are fighting side by side against Kaido and he's not even using Ashura yet. So Zoro should definitely be able to do this, give or take a bit of effort. By the way, Ashra is Zoro's only real power-up, and he's not used that after the time skip. No, the bandana does not count as a real power-up. Anyways, this means that as of chapter 1007, what is considered base Zoro should be comparable to Luffy in Gear 2nd. With that, we've come to the end of Zoro's post-time skip feats. Guys, every time I make one of these videos, I always find things that I never saw before. Like when Drake casually drags Carbo across the ground after he just consumed an entire weapons factory, or Odin being vastly stronger than the entire population of the Fire Capital, and they were strong enough to shift the very foundation of the city. However, those feats will have to wait until I talk about Sanji and Odin. Until then, I hope that you enjoyed this journey into the depths of Zoro's power. So, thanks for watching, see you next time, remember to stay spectacular, Jojo, out.